Hello and welcome to the Ionic YouTube channel. My name is Logan Braid. I'm a developer advocate at OutSystems for the Ionic team. And this is the second episode in a series that I like to call Out of the Box with a Capacitor. Out of the Box is basically a series where I create interesting projects with Capacitor using the built-in capabilities of the platform. But as an added twist, these projects are a little more off the wall than your typical development projects. This is to show off just how powerful Capacitor is as a tool when developing applications, but also just to show you how flexible it can be with other technologies. In my first video, I showed off how Capacitor could be integrated with BotTango, an animatronic software to create a cross-platform animatronic control app to run physical hardware like servo motors in something like a robotics project. While that project was really cool and unique, it's definitely not a prerequisite for this episode of Out of the Box but I highly recommend you check it out if you haven't seen it yet. In today's episode, we're gonna be building a cross-platform AR VR application. Yeah, you heard that right, a cross-platform AR VR application. In today's episode, I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to use WebXR technologies to create immersive experiences in your apps and then run your app on a variety of different platforms, including iOS, Android, and even VR headsets like Apple's Vision Pro or the MetaQuest line through the web. Basically, if the device you want to run on uh, supports WebXR, then you should be able to run this project on that platform. This will be a quick and simple demo utilizing Angular, A-Frame, and of course, Capacitor. But think of it as a launching off point to build more complex immersive experience as your skill set grows. There will be a link to a blog post and code to follow along if that's the way that you want to follow along. But before we begin, did you know that we're almost at 40,000 subscribers? Yeah, 40,000. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to the channel, join our Discord and our forums so we can keep creating cool content like this and help grow the Ionic community. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So you might be asking yourself, what is WebXR? At its core, WebXR is a W3C standard that enables immersive experiences on the web. According to W3C's Immersive Web Working Group, it is a device API that provides access to input, such as pose information from headset and controllers, and outputs, such as a hardware display, uh, capabilities commonly associated with virtual reality and augmented reality devices. It allows you to develop and host AR and VR experiences on the web. Basically, this is done by using HTML, CSS, and WebGL, which is a JavaScript API to build that immersive experience. However, if you've ever had to use WebGL directly, it can be a tough way to work. Just looking at WebGL code made me realize that I probably should have paid more attention in math and physics classes in school. But uh, for those of us without advanced math and physics degrees, developers have created really useful libraries like 3.js, Babylon.js, and Play Canvas that have abstracted WebGL to make the development experience better, but even those tools can still be difficult for most developers to use. Luckily for us, frameworks exist to further abstract those libraries to make WebXR development even simpler. One particular framework, A-Frame, is what we'll be using for our project today. A-Frame is a simple declarative framework that uses custom HTML elements to build your AR VR scenes in your project. It's so simple, in fact, that today's demo can literally fit on a single page and can be used in numerous web frameworks or even just vanilla JavaScript projects. I'll be using A-Frame in an Angular project just because Angular is really popular and it's what I like to use, and then using Capacitor to make the demo cross-platform. For this demo, we'll just be making a project that allows us to enter the immersive experience but you can absolutely add interactive components to your scenes, and I'll be adding resources that show you how to do that if you wanna take this project further. Let's go ahead and jump into the code. So as you can see here, I have my Angular project. I set this up using the Ionic CLI, so it is an Ionic Angular project. If you'd like to see how to bootstrap your own Ionic Angular project, I do have a video on that process here that is also here on the Ionic YouTube channel. It's a pretty straightforward process. Um, in this project, you can see that I have two standalone components. So I have a home page, and the home page essentially just consists of text and a button that go into the actual WebXR experience. So this one is just, it has a title card, it says Welcome to Capacitor Land, and it's an Ionic WebXR experience. Uh, and then the button, of course, and when you click on the button, it goes into the WebXR component, and this is what really holds all the code. As you can see, I do have the code preloaded in here. 
it's uh, really straightforward. We're talking about 20 lines of code to actually start building um, AR and VR experiences using A-Frame. So it makes it super easy, very straightforward. And um, I'm just using the code, the demo code from A-Frame, which is honestly really easy to use. Um, I don't have any interactive components with this AR VR experience just because that requires like more more code, and I just wanted to really show off the simple aspects of this code and just how little code it takes to get into an immersive experience. So the first thing we need to do is actually install the package. So it's npm i for install, a frame, and then we wanna save this into our project. And now I've already installed this, so your install might look a little bit different, but it should be, honestly, it's really quick and easy to install. And then once we have a frame installed on our project, uh, we actually need to import it in the polyfills file. So as you can see here, I already have it underneath browser polyfills, import A-frame, so we're just gonna uncomment that. So now with A-frame actually imported into our project, there is one other thing that we need to do. Um, A-frame essentially uses custom schema components in order for it to run. So because we're using standalone components, we actually gotta go into the component that's housing our WebXR code and enable custom schemas. And that's really easy. So under my component here, I have schemas. I already have it commented out and I'll just uncomment it, but you just wanna add custom elements schema, and then you also wanna import it, it's in Angular core. And now we wanna actually add our code. And like I said, I have it here, it's already commented out, but it's pretty straightforward. And I'll be sure to link out to where you can find this code for yourself if you wanna just like copy and paste it, or if you wanna look at the screen, follow along. It's fairly straightforward. But as you can see, we have a box, we have a sphere, and we have a cylinder with all the different locations. And then we also have a plane. <laughs> so basically all, a plane is where all of these objects, objects can sit on top of. And honestly, just a basic sky color. It's super easy. And then I've also added a back button because we wanna be able to back out of the experience if it's an AR experience. Um, and in VR, it's a little bit different to get out of it. So now that we have our code in our project, I think it's now time to deploy it to different platforms. So I'm going to start with iOS. So let me go ahead and do an add. So Ionic cap add iOS. Cool. So as you can see, I already have iOS installed. <laughs> That's just to walk through the steps so you can actually see it. Then we want to build our project. So Ionic build. and then Ionic Cap Sync. And that should actually sync our project. Okay, now that's done. So I have iOS added, but I also kind of want to show you what it looks like right now. So let's do Ionic Serve, if I can actually spell Ionic Serve. Cool, so that's actually gonna run our application on the web. So let's see what that looks like. I'll bring it over here. Make sure we're still recording. Yes, okay, we're still screen recording. So as you can see, just a basic project. It says, welcome to Capacitor Land and Ionic Web XR Experience. It's a demo application. Now we wanna go ahead and run it. There it is. So this is what our basic project looks like. And in the web form, um, there is a back button. You won't necessarily see this on the actual VR portion of the application when you run it on the headset, but it is important to have it on here so that you don't have to like use the back button. It's kind of built in. And it also makes it easier when you're doing it cross platform. Okay, so now we got that, but now we wanna go ahead and actually run our application on iOS and in Xcode. Here it is, Ionic Cap Run iOS. And what this will do is, this is gonna actually open up our project in Xcode. Uh, we do need to pick a device. Uh, we'll do iPhone 15, perfect. And now this will take a couple minutes to actually run your project, especially if you're doing it for the first time. There it is, and here is our device, and we're gonna go ahead and launch it. Yeah, that's fine. And a little note about that pop-up that you just saw. So it is built into WebXR that you have to use um, SSL in order to 
like run your project on a device. Um, that's just something that's built in with the standard. So when you deploy this, you do have to make sure that it's secured, especially when we get to the portion, the web portion, where we're running it on device for like Apple Vision Pro and all those other things. It will not run if it's not actually deployed somewhere with SSL certs enabled. But as you can see, we have this project over here and it might be beneficial to show it off on an actual working device so you can see how it works in three-dimensional space. So we'll do cap open iOS. And like I said, this does take a few minutes because this is a lot. <laughs> this is any, any time that you have an AR VR project, it does take a while to run just because of how intense it is on the device. As you can see, I have capacitor land open. We're gonna launch it. Now you can actually move around. So you can envision this, like if we were doing an augmented reality experience with like a transparent background, you should be able to anchor this in like the actual space so that it would work with an augmented reality experience. But let's go ahead and push this a little bit further. So this does work on Android too. Let me go ahead and show off that experience as well. Show off Android. Cool, we'll do a Pixel 3. The other thing to be cognizant of when you're trying to run these projects is that WebXR isn't supported on every device, but this will work on any device that supports WebXR. So just kind of an important note because you don't wanna to try to like build this whole experience out and realize a majority of your users are using devices that don't support WebXR that can kind of create a really bad user experience. So we wanna make sure that we're creating good user experiences when we're going through this. Okay. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and launch this. Yep. And as you can see, we have it on Android as well, <laughs> which is crazy cool to be able to deploy this on iOS and Android. Like, I don't know. I did a blog post a while back where I talked about AR VR tech and it, it was really hard to get anything to work on Android and ultimately couldn't do it the way that I had explained it in that blog post but this shows a way to actually do that. But now that we have that established, let's take this a step further. Let's get this to run on the Apple Vision Pro. Now I don't have my own headset, but what I do have is the simulator. So we're gonna run this using the simulator. So we're gonna get Xcode back open. And now I have already deployed this project to a, uh, on, as a website. So I basically have all the SSL stuff set up. Um, I will post documentation on how to do it. I use AWS and CloudFront to get my project working so I can like work it on an actual physical headset. But just keep that in mind, you have to deploy it to, in order for this to really run. I think you might be able to run it locally and have it work, but it's, it's a little spotty to say the least. So let's go ahead and open up Vision Pro. Actually, I'm gonna do it through Simulator file, open simulator, vision OS, here we go, Apple Vision Pro. Actually, while that's running, let me get, I'm gonna try localhost and see if it works. If it doesn't, then I'll go ahead and post my actual website to check it out. Cool, okay. So now we're in the Apple Vision Pro headset. Let's see. Yeah, let's me look around. So we're gonna go into Safari on the web. Oh, I do have it here. Actually, we're going to show, we'll try local just so I can see if it can work at home for you guys. Yeah. And then we want to go, oh, it does work on localhost. Okay. So you don't have to deploy the project. That's, that makes life so much easier. I was having problems with it earlier, so I don't know if something's changed, but let's go ahead and launch it. And it's going to pop up and it's going to ask you if you want to run this. And of course you do. This is something that's built into Vision Pro and WebXR. Like it's going to ask you these questions. So you kind of have to be prepared to, to do this. Oh, is it not going to work? Allow. Hey, there it is. And there you go. And that's how easy it is to get started with Angular, 
A-frame, and capacitor to build cross-platform AR VR applications. If you like what you saw in this video, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also be on the lookout for more content like this. We've got a whole bunch of cool stuff planned and we're gonna be talking about more stuff in the future and I hope to see you soon. Thanks.